ladies and gentlemen, a really warm welcome to All Saints Long Ashton on this uh, most joyful of days. Uh, welcome to all of you gathered here. Uh, welcome to those who are watching us uh, online at home, worshipping uh, elsewhere, but joined with us in the spirit this morning. Uh, welcome to some uh, rather special visitors in the Royal Box, which some of you may have <laughs> noticed on the way in. It's really very good to see you all here. And let me just say a huge thank you, a general, all-encompassing thank you to everyone who's made this service and everything else that will happen today possible. Uh, there are, as ever, too many to name individually, but you know, uh, all of you, the parts that you've played in bringing us to this point. And as I say, for what will happen later this morning, so thank you. What is happening later this morning uh, is more fun and games. After our service here, uh, we are going to have a, a reception here in church. Drinks will be served to you. And I need to tell you, you need to stay in your seats and you will be served uh, from what I believe is being called the Prosecco Pram. <laughs> So uh, when the service ends, just stay where you are. Drinks will come to you. Uh, there's a non-alcoholic option as well, of course. Uh, and then do hang around. Uh, the choir will sing during the service, but they'll also uh, be singing a piece for us during that reception. You will hear the bells again, all eight bells today being rung in a celebratory quarter peal. And then the party starts at one o'clock. Food will be available from the pub, from the back gate of the pub at one o'clock, uh, and the tables will be set out, as you've probably seen as you came in, uh, for us all to join together, to celebrate, to eat together. One important thing, as you go up and down the lane, please, please take a moment to look at the bunting, which is along the wall, uh, the farm wall, in the, the top part of the lane. It's been created by children at Birdwell and North Lee schools. And there is a, a triangle, a piece of the bunting for every year of the Queen's reign. And each piece shows an event that happened during that year. It is an astounding piece of work uh, in terms of the, the artistry, but also all the research and the history that it, uh, it demonstrates. So please do go and look at that. Those will be going back to school afterwards for them to continue to use uh, to, for their history and for their learning in the future. So do take the chance to look at it today. Uh, it's a very great pleasure to publish some bands of marriage as we gather today. I publish the bands of marriage uh, between Christy Alexandra Smith and Alexander Stephen Perry, both of this parish of Long Ashton, and this is for the first time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why Christy and Alex may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Thank you. So, as we gather on this uh, special day, uh, can I invite you to stand if you're able? Uh, our opening hymn in a moment will be number 17 in your hymn book, the first verse sung uh, by the choir. And as our service begins, let's hold silence, recognize the presence of God with us, and David will lead us in prayer shortly. Open our lips. Let your ways be known upon earth. We gather together today to worship God and in thanksgiving for the 70 years of faithful service 
of our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth. We give thanks for her example of faithfulness to God and to her people, and pray God's blessing on her that she may continue to fulfill the promises she has made with generosity and joy. For our part, we ask for the help and inspiration of the Holy Spirit to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives in the service of God and one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. we stand, let us pray. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do be seated as we hear our first reading. Psalm 21, King David rejoices in God's faithfulness and strength. The king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. 
You have granted him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. You came to greet him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him, length of days forever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord through the unfailing love of the Most High. He will not be shaken. This is the word of the Lord. Throughout her life and reign, the Queen has often attested to her dependence on God for strength to carry out the service to which she has been called. The following are excerpts from her many public speeches and prayers. On her 21st birthday, April 21st, 1947. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. 
but I shall not have strength to carry out this resolution alone unless you join in it with me, as I now invite you to do. I know that your support will be unfailingly given. God help me to make good my vow, and God bless all of you who are willing to share in it. In advance of her coronation, in an address to the people of the United Kingdom and Commonwealth. Pray that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. And in 2002, after 50 years on the throne, I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is try to do what is right, take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings, and to put my trust in God. I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. So with those words of faith ringing in our ears, let's stand together and sing again number 56 in your hymn books, Be Thou My Vision. Please do sit down uh, for our next two readings. Long Ashton, 1809. 
an account of the celebration of the Jubilee on the 25th of October, 1809, being the 49th anniversary of the reign of George III, the father of his people. The parishioners of Long Ashton invited every inhabitant, male and female, that had attained their 50th year to partake of a good old English dinner of roast beef and plum pudding, properly moistened with Sir John Barleycorn's best stingo. <laughs> Immediately after divine service, in which the blessings and duties of the auspicious day were most impressively enforced by the vicar, <laughs> about 120 persons walked in procession from the church to the Angel Inn and sat down to the plentiful meal which was provided for and served up to them by the gentlemen of the parish. After having been abundantly but temperately regaled, they again attended their minister, church warden and the other gentlemen to the church, where every person received a shilling loaf of bread and money was liberally given to all the inhabitants who would accept the same in proportion to the number of their respective families. <laughs> A reading from the Ecclesiastical History of the English People by the Venerable Bede. Bede ponders the nature of divine comfort and guidance amid the storms of life. Your Majesty, King Edwin, when we compare the present life of man on earth with that time of which we have no knowledge, it seems to me like the swift flight of a single sparrow through the banqueting hall where you were sitting at dinner on a winter's day with your chiefs and counsellors. In the midst, there is a comforting fire to warm the hall. Outside, storms of winter snow or rain are raging. This sparrow flies swiftly in through one door of the hall and out through the other. While he is inside, he is safe from the winter storms. But of what went before this life, or of what follows, we know nothing. Therefore, if this new teaching has brought any more certain knowledge, it seems only right that we should follow it. Let's stand together and sing again uh, number 321, Love Divine.
please be seated for our final reading. And this reading is from the Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2. The coming of God's Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue, in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, and not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Mids, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. By golly, there's a lot going on today. There's a lot going on. Today we mark a platinum pudding of parties, a Victoria sandwich of celebrations, a jubilee jumble of signs and symbols. It is the Feast of Pentecost, or Whitson, if you prefer. We're celebrating the birthday of the church and the source of our strength and vision as Christ's body on earth. But we're also gathering as a community after two years of keeping our distance, a local community to celebrate all that is good in this patch of land that we call home. And as we gather, we do so in union with communities across this country, with the Commonwealth Community of Nations, and with people of goodwill throughout the world. We're marking a particular moment in time, seven decades in the making. 
but we're also caught up in a seamless, timeless tradition, a handing on of signs and symbols, a thousand ages passed like a watch in the night, strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow. We honour today a head of state for her service, a commander-in-chief for her duty, a supreme governor for her faith and leadership, a widow in the dignity and resilience of her grief, a mother, grandmother and great-grandmother in the navigation of the joys and trials of family life, a sister in Christ for her example, her witness and her shared service with us of a universal king, another country, a higher kingdom. By golly, there's a lot going on today. A lot to draw together. But I want to talk about one thing that seems to me to connect it all and to run through our readings. And that's fire. Who loves a fire? Yeah, I can see the church warden putting his hand up. We love fire, don't we? Warm and bright, comforting, a source of guidance, a source of warning, a source of protection. Fire used for celebrating, for cooking, for all sorts of things that sustain community and sustain life. Now, I am um, going to take off some of this garb for now because it, we could get into a bit of a conflagration. I did um, wonder if the sound and light show from uh, Buckingham Palace might have been available and we could have had, you know, tongues of fire on the screen here, which I think would have looked pretty good. Uh, but apparently the budget didn't stretch to that once Tony had bought all the Prosecco. Uh, so we haven't got that. And then I did wonder about asking Dave if we could have the, uh, the village beacon brought down. Who was there on Thursday night to see the beacon lit? What a wonderful occasion. But um, no, I was told that the risk assessment didn't quite, uh, didn't stretch to a, a flaming beacon in church. So... Um, if you'll allow me, this will be our fire today, and I think you'll agree it's pretty impressive. <laughs> you might want to just um, watch, watch out in the front row. It's going to be quite... Uh... <laughs> I think the chariots of fire, Colin, might be quite good. lost my place now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's going to cut it, though? If we just go back to that Bible reading that we heard that Nini read to us about the day of Pentecost, one of the many things that we're celebrating today. <laughs> Suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. I think we might need a bit of imagination uh, to get this going, and I wonder if uh, we could bring to life that scene from a room uh, on that first day of Pentecost. I think we need some wind. Maybe on this side uh, we could have the sound of a rushing wind, Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, on this side, perhaps, um, tongues of fire. It's quite hot. You'd have to imagine that today. But I think maybe a, whew, the, the sheer heat of it. Fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic, Colin. Thank you. <laughs> You're determined to make me uh, 
completely lose my place. It's, but I think that's a bit more like it. The, the wind and the heat, because we all know that a fire needs three things to survive, don't we? It needs air and oxygen, it needs heat, and it needs fuel, something to burn. I think that the air, the, the wind that God gives are the ideas and the imagination and the vision that we might have for a different world. And the heat, the fire that God gives in God's Holy Spirit are the love and the encouragement and the passion at work in people like you and me. And when those ideas and that imagination and that vision come together with that love and passion in a willing and open heart to fuel the fire, when they come together, as the first disciples discovered, everything is different. Questions are answered, differences are resolved, misunderstandings put right as everybody communicates well. Courage and energy and purpose are renewed to go out and change the world for good, for God. Throughout the long love story of God and his people, it has been the light and warmth of the fire of the Holy Spirit that has sustained and inspired and guided and strengthened ordinary human beings to achieve extraordinary feats of loving service in his name. And that is the same light and warmth of the Holy Spirit, which, as the Prince of Wales put it last night, gets Her Majesty up each morning and continues to sustain her, even now, even in the face of her human frailty, in the role to which she has been called. 3,000 years ago, King David Uh, saw God's hand in the blazing crown of gold that was placed on his head, as we heard in our first reading. At the close of the first millennium, the Venerable Bede likened our life to the flight of a sparrow sustained in that banqueting hall by the comfort of a fire. The people who sat in these pews 200 years ago were moved to generous service of their neighbours, their fellows, to provide hospitality, food, money, generously. Our own Queen, over the course of the last century, has spoken repeatedly about what it is to find her strength and purpose in God. And what about us here today? Will we rise to the challenge of working for a world where all created life flourishes and the intricate and fragile balance of our planet's ecosystems is restored? Will we rise to the challenge of working for a world world where all human life in its myriad diverse expressions is celebrated and valued, where generous hospitality and sacrificial service and prayerful humility characterize the way we live with one another so that all may take part and no one is left out. These have been the priorities of a life of service and example for the Queen, and not just because she chose them, in some arbitrary way, but because when the crown rested on her head, when she was anointed in power by the Holy Spirit for the work that lay ahead of her, it was a vision of a different kingdom and the love of a God that she willingly committed to pursue and uphold. When inspiration for a better way of living combines with the love and passion of God to consume a willing human heart, 
then the result is nothing less than world changing. As Buckingham Palace turned into a, a flowing mass of molten lava last night in the midst of that concert, the American singer Alicia Keys sang, This Girl is on Fire. And it's true. In Her Majesty the Queen, we have an example of someone who is ablaze for God's purposes, for God's kingdom. And so in this, the place that we find ourselves, at this point in history, with all that's going on in the world and with the particular gifts that we have been given, may our loyal tribute, may our grateful response to her example be in the words of one of her favorite parables, the reading used at her coronation 69 years ago. May our response be to go and do likewise in the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ to the glory of God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Tony's going to come and lead us now in our prayers. As we pray together, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, can we all join in, uh, hear our prayer? We are glad to be here. Father, we celebrate your presence with us. We celebrate our life together. Our life together as your people, your people in this place and your people in this community. We are your church. We celebrate this community in Long Ashton and our place in this land. And we thank you for our Queen, whose jubilee we celebrate this weekend, for her faith, her devoted service, her giving of herself to and for others. As she has been a gift to us, may we be a gift to others, a gift to our families, our friends, our places of work, our neighbours, to this community and to this land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we be channels of your peace. Where there is hatred, may we bring love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there is doubt, true faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all in authority under her. May they order all things with wisdom and equity, with righteousness and peace to the honour and glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless and guide Her Majesty that we may all receive grace to honour life, to live in harmony with one another. And we pray for those whose lives are marred by conflict, suffering or tragedy. And we think now of those places around our world 
are places in our own land that have been affected by tragedy, marred by conflict, and where suffering is part of everyday life. And we particularly pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray that that conflict may cease. That those who have the ability may have the will to bring about not only resolution, but cessation of conflict. And we pray for individuals in that country, people from Ukraine who've come to our country, as we welcome them. May they know your grace and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commit our country to you. May we live together as one people. And may our lives together glorify you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we have this weekend given thanks for the reign of Elizabeth, our Queen. We're very conscious of her example, an example of loving and faithful service. And as we reflect upon that, help us to follow that example of dedication, that we may commit ourselves to you in service. in service of one another, in service of our communities. And as your people in this place, led by your spirit, we look to that future and we ask that by the power and in the strength, by the light and life and fire of your spirit, we may follow you into that future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. Amen. Let us now gather up all our prayers in the words our Saviour taught us to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be our name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
as we prepare to go out into the world to walk with Jesus in pursuit of his kingdom. May I invite you to stand, uh, if you're able, to join in this act of dedication. As we give thanks for Her Majesty's service to us all, let us dedicate our own lives again to the love and service of God and neighbour. We say together, Lord of our lives, Father of all, grant that our thanksgiving may prove itself in service to you and to our Queen, our country and one another. For your name's sake. Amen. We sing now number 188, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. <coughs> Lord, all things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Take these gifts and use them in your service, we pray. Amen. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you. Those for whom you pray, go with you from this place and remain with you always. Amen. Remain standing for the national anthem, three verses in your hymn book 177.
thank you so much for sharing this time of worship with us. Uh, do stay around, enjoy the refreshments, enjoy the choir, enjoy the bells, enjoy the party on this great day of celebration. And when you go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.